It's been a good day for India down under. A sportsperson tasted sweet victory not once or twice, but in all three sporting encounters that featured Indians today. First, it was the women's T20 team recording a 10-wicket win against the powerful Australian side in their second encounter of the three-match series. Then came Santina, the pair of Sanya Mirza and Martina Hingis, who continued their unbeaten run, winning their 36th match in a row to claim their third Grand Slam title. And finally, Mahindra Singh Dhoni's men salvaging pride to thrash the Australians by 27 runs. All this good news and more in the next half hour. Uh, you're watching the news tonight with me, Sean Russell, and these are the headlines that we're tracking right now. Ahead of the union budget, Prime Minister Narendra Modi underscores reforms that impact the lives of citizens. RBI Governor Raghuram Rajan cautions against financing growth through more debt. Reprieve for Uman Chandi, Kerala High Court puts on hold lower court's order to file case against him in the solar panel scam case. Beating the retreat held with traditional military splendor in New Delhi, Delhi police ban marks its return after 67 years. And a day of sporting delights for India and Australia. Santina Pera, Sanya Mirza and partner Martina Hingis in the finals to win their third Grand Slam title at the Australian Open. Team India thrash host Australia, women's cricket team scripting, uh, scripts cricketing history to go ahead 2-0. Dhoni's men win by 27 runs in Melbourne. A top story this evening, Prime Minister Narendra Modi today underscored the significance of reforms that impact the lives of citizens for the better. Addressing the Economic Times Global Business Summit in New Delhi, Modi said true reforms are those which result in transformation in the lives of citizens. Pointing out that the global economy is going through a period of uncertainty, he said the true reforms are those that lead to transformation of people's lives. The global economy is going through a period of uncertainty. For a country in the modern day, it is not sufficient that its economic policies should only address its domestic priorities. To me, India's policies must be such that they make a positive contribution to the rest of the world. Now, ahead of the budget, RBI Governor Raghuram Rajan warned against generating economic growth through additional debt. He said any deviation from the fiscal consolidation path will hurt the stability of the economy. Rajan said macroeconomic stability during the global turmoil can't be risk and the government and RBI should continue to bring down inflation. Rajan cautioned that, as Brazil's experience suggests, the enormous costs of becoming an unstable country outweigh any small growth benefits that can be obtained through aggressive policies. Speaking at another event, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley said that the 8% GDP growth can be achieved next fiscal on account of improved rural demand and better monsoon, even as he urged the opposition parties not to play games in Parliament when it comes to the passage of bills to initiate key reforms. The Kerala High Court today stayed the filing of an FIR against the Chief Minister Uman Chandi in the solar scam case for two months. Chandi had moved the High Court against a Trishur Vigilance Court order, which allowed an FIR to be filed against him in the scam. In its ruling, the High Court said that the Vigilance Court had acted mechanically without knowing the nature and extent of its powers. Major relief for Kerala Chief Minister Uman Chandi. The State High Court has put on hold the order of the Vigilance Court to register an FIR against him and his cabinet colleague in the solar scam case. There can be no police case against Uman Chandi for at least two months following the High Court's intervention. A relieved Chandi called it a victory of truth. The 
Leaders of the Congress were also quick to welcome the High Court reprieve for Uman Chandi. It is a nexus, unholy nexus, between CPM and the liquor lobby. Everybody knows the liquor lobby in Kerala is very, very powerful because they are handling crores and crores of rupees. UDF has taken a decision that we will not encourage the liquor lobby. Now elections are coming. And liquor lobby knows that if we are winning, then they will have no chance of again going into the liquor business. We have complete faith uh, in the majesty of the judicial process and Congress party will continue to abide by whatever the court will finally decide. Sarita Nair, the second accused in the solar scam case, expressed displeasure over the High Court decision as she levelled fresh allegations against Oman Chandi. <laughs> There was also no let up in the political storm engulfing the Kerala Chief Minister. Protests demanding his ouster continued on Friday. Members of the Democratic Youth Federation of India and the BJP's Youth Wing demonstrated outside the state secretariat demanding Chandi's resignation. As the protests turned violent, the police resorted to using tear gas to disperse the crowd. Clamour for Chandi's resignation grew in the national political circle as well. Mr. Woman Chandi must step down and he cannot remain in office. He has no moral right to continue to be the chief minister. UDF stands thoroughly exposed as far as corruption is concerned. The position of the left parties has been vindicated. It is absolutely shocking when God's own state, Kerala, is reeling under corruption, one corruption to another corruption, from bar bribery to solar bribery. We are seeing that a shameless Congress is trying to look the other way. The BJP also attacked the Congress top brows over the solar scam, alleging that Sonia and Rahul Gandhi were protecting Oman Chandi as they lacked the moral authority to act against him since they too were facing graft charges in the National Herald case. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now after a bitter defeat in Delhi and Bihar, the BJP appears hopeful about the Assembly elections in Assam. The party wants to avoid confusion and is trying to form a clear strategy before the elections. For this very reason, the BJP has declared Sarbananda Sonowal as its chief ministerial candidate well before time. In Delhi, the party had declared Kiran Bedi as its chief ministerial candidate at the last moment and in Bihar, it could not project any credible leadership. The BJP parliamentary board took the decision at its meeting in New Delhi on Thursday. Now, correspondent Pranav Goswami spoke to Sarbananda Sonowal. Let's listen in to what he had to say. We have been saying that Congress has been ruling uh, for the last 15 years and uh, we've also seen that pro-incumbency factor is actually uh, is, is in favour of uh, Congress. What do you think that BJP has got chances? Why do you think that BJP has got chances in this election? Look, BJP can bring changes to the uh, life of the people of Assam. That, like, confidence is there in the mindset of the people of Assam. So that's why, like, for the development, for the good governance, for the security of life and property, and also the identity of the people of Assam, this time, people of Assam have decided to bring BJP into power. And, uh, sir, uh, you had alliance with uh, AGP in previous elections. Uh, uh, will you be going with uh, AGP again in this coming election? Because in Lok Sabha election, AGP and BJP uh, fought, uh, they were not together. And do you think that or BJP will go alone uh, for uh, assembly election? No, we are like, you know, this, uh, having discussion with all the local parties, minus Congress, minus AODF. We have been trying to um, take everybody into confidence. And what, uh, what are going to be uh, the main issues uh, for BJP in this election, uh, specifically uh, on IMDT Act? What will be uh, your issue regarding this? Yeah, of course, illegal migrant will be a major issue. And uh, at the same time, development, as I have already said, good governance and security. 
So these are the important issues uh, we are going to take it up because the people of Assam want uh, the protection of identity, political identity, social identity, cultural identity, etc., etc. So that's a very important point for all of the people of Assam living in Barak Valley and Brahmaputra Valley. So and for the employment opportunity and also the developing entrepreneurship for the youth. So that's why like uh, development will be one of the major agenda. At the same time, uh, during the Congress regime, there was massive corruption and malpractices. So that is why people uh, become insecure from all angles. So that's why people want good governance. And at the same time, the security from all sides. Sarvanan Sonwal is very confident and very optimistic that this time BJP will perform well in Assam Assembly election. Pranav Goswami, Rajya Sabha TV, Delhi. Time now to take a look at what else is making news around the country nationwide. The Supreme Court today asked the centre to set up an expert committee to look into the grievances pertaining to service conditions of nurses employed at private hospitals and private nursing homes across the country. The government has uh, been uh, given four weeks for this. A three-judge bench also asked the centre to consider a law, uh, making a law based on the recommendations which would be given to it by the expert committee on the issue. A Sessions Court in Kolkata held six out of eight guilty in the gang rape and murder of a 20-year-old girl in 2013. Two accused were let off due to lack of evidence. The victim was gang raped and brutally murdered while returning home from college in West Bengal's North 24 Parganas uh, district. Uh, the quantum of punishment is likely to be announced on Saturday. The National Green Tribunal has directed the Delhi government to submit a report on the, uh, on the ambient air quality of the national capital during the implementation of the odd-even scheme. The direction came while hearing a plea seeking ban on three wheelers running on two-stroke engines and quadricycles on the ground as they cause pollution. More than 200 MCD workers today gathered outside the residence of Delhi's Transport Minister Gopal Rai and dumped garbage there to protest against non-payment of salaries. The sanitation workers began their protest on Wednesday and have threatened to intensify their agitation if their dues were not paid immediately. Garbage has been littered across streets, posing serious health hazards. A nearly 40-foot uh, dead whale drew large crowds in Mumbai's popular Juhu Beach on Friday until it was removed with the help of a crane. The 20-ton uh, whale was, uh, had washed up on Thursday night. The Mumbai Mangrove Conservation Unit believed that the whale had died around 2-3 days ago and a post-mortem will ascertain the cause of death. Well, we'll take a short break and as we head into it, we'll leave you with this. The historic presidential buggy made a comeback today at the beating of the retreat ceremony with President Pranam Mukherjee arriving in it to attend the ceremony. The open gold-plated carriage was just one of the many attractions of the ceremony that was watched by hundreds of spectators who had gathered to witness the colourful event at Raisina Hill. The beating of the retreat ceremony is held every year on the 29th of January and marks the end of Republic Day celebrations. We leave you with these as we go into a break. News has a uh, political, uh, a different kind of people have different opinions. But I think uh, media is not looking at the academic activism which I called in JNU. Which is much, much stronger than what you is reflected in the media. Watch Eureka with Professor S.K. Sobri, former Vice Chancellor, GNU, on Rajya Sabha TV. Welcome back. You're watching the news tonight. 
Now, some latest uh, from the Australian Open and continuing their stupendous run. Women's World number one doubles pair, Sanya Mirza and Martina Hingis, overcame the pair, uh, Czech pair of Lavakova and Radeka in straight sets to win their first Australian Open at the Rod Lever Arena on Friday. In the men's semi final, Andy Murray beat Milas Raonic to meet a reigning champion, Novak Djokovic, in Sunday's final. It took just under two hours for the Santina Brigade to wrap up their third women's doubles Grand Slam title. The world number one pair of Sanya Mirza and Martina Hingis beat seven seeds Lakova and Radeka 7 6 6 3. Sanya, you know, without you, I wouldn't be here today and standing on this court again. So thank you. Hopefully, yeah, once again, uh, we, we, we try to defend our title hopefully next year. Thank you very much. First of all, um, I'd like to thank everyone uh, for being out here, supporting us. Uh, it, was, it was a great atmosphere to play in front of you guys. It was the second time here this week and um, we had a lot of fun. And, you know, for me, Aust Australian Open has been very special. I've had a lot of great memories here and uh, it's as close to home as it gets for me. So it's an Australasian Grand Slam and I always look forward to coming here every year. So thanks, guys. And and thanks, Craig. The Czechs, however, didn't give up without a fight in the opening set. Both pairs were broken four times each in the first set before Mirza sealed it in the tie break after 62 minutes. Andy and Lucy, uh, I've actually lost one final against you guys at, at Roland Garros, so um, we always knew how good you are, and congratulations on a great uh, two weeks, and I'm sure we'll have a lot more great finals against each other. Martina was equally effusive in her praise for the Czechs. You know, you won two Grand Slams, so you push us to the limits today. Definitely the, one of the best uh, first sets. I know the guys were, probably will be saying, you know, it's break, 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 break. But we have the best returns in, the, in women's uh, doubles or in, in the game. Um, Sanya and Martina now have an unbeaten run of 36 matches, winning eight titles on the trot. The pair have won 12 titles ever since they came together in the BNP Paribas Open last spring. Sanya, however, was unlucky in her mixed double semi-final match later in the evening. Top seed Sanya and her Croatian partner Ivan Dodic lost the match 7-5, 7-6 to fifth seeds Elena Vesnina and Bruno Suarez. In the men's draw, world number two Andy Murray reached his fifth Australian Open final after an epic five-set battle with 13 seed Milos Raonic. Murray was broken in the first game by his 25-year-old Canadian opponent who went on to take the first and third sets. But the 28-year-old Scotsman prevailed 4-6, 7-5, 6-7, 6-4, 6-2 in a grueling four-hour contest. You know, I started to get a slightly better read on his serve as the match went on. I was able to make a few more returns and... Um, yeah, that was, that was the key. Mare will now meet reigning champion Novak Djokovic in Sunday's final and will somehow have to turn round a record that has seen him lose 10 of their last 11 encounters. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now, with the Zika scare spreading across the world, India today decided to constitute a technical group to monitor the situation. The move comes just a day after the WHO predicted 4 million Zika cases this year. The Indian Medical Association has also issued an advisory asking pregnant women to avoid visiting Latin America. The virus is suspected to cause birth defects in newborn babies. With no cure and no vaccine for the virus so far, WHO has convened an emergency meet on Monday to discuss the virus's spread and its ramifications. Microcephaly, a rare neurological disorder with long-term physical and mental repercussions. It is the biggest global nightmare being spread by Aedes mosquito that carries the Zika virus. 80% of those infected don't even feel sick. But the major worry is about pregnant women and babies. The picture is deeply concerned about this rapidly evolving situation for four main reasons. First, the possible association of infection with birth malformations and neurological syndromes. Second, the potential for further international spread given the wide geographical distribution of the mosquito vector. The WHO says the Zika virus is spreading extensively in Americas with three to four million infections estimated over a 12-month period. 
Venezuela has announced at least 4,500 suspected cases. In Brazil, President Dilma Rousseff called for international cooperation to combat the virus. Concerns are high since it will host the Olympic Games in capital Rio de Janeiro this year. In Honduras, the health ministry launched a campaign to alert people. They also initiated fumigation to kill mosquitoes. Meanwhile, in Chile, health officials delivered repellents and handed out flyers to travelers at Santiago. In the U.S., White House expressed concern about its potential impact on pregnant women. The U.S. has confirmed at least 12 cases. Today, cases have been reported in 23 countries and territories in the region. The level of alarm is extremely high. O governo federal está garantindo todos os recursos, equipamentos e pessoal necessários da participação da sociedade nessa batalha que deve ser continuada e que será de médio prazo. According to WHO, India could also be at risk. The center decided to constitute a technical group to monitor the situation. एक high level की technical committee बने, जिस technical committee में uh, हमें suggestions और हमारे को real time action क्या लेना है इसके बारे में जानकारी तुरंत हमको दी जाए और इसकी बैठक आज शुरू भी हो गई है इसमें WHO के प्रतिनिधि होंगे इसमें uh, technical expert group हैं उनके प्रतिनिधि होंगे इसमें National Institute of Virology है उसके भी प्रतिनिधि होंगे The infection is caused by a mosquito bite Common symptoms of the Zika disease are fever, rash, joint pain or conjunctivitis Symptoms typically start two to seven days after the mosquito bite. Zika was first detected in Uganda in 1947, but an outbreak of this scale was never reported. It has no vaccine at the moment, but the U.S. says it hopes to start human vaccine trials by the end of 2016. Bureau report, Raji Sabha TV. Now the United Nations mediated peace talks for war torn Syria are underway in Geneva. The talks aim to bring a peaceful resolution to the five-year-old conflict that has caused widespread destruction. Although the main uh, Syrian opposition has decided to skip the meet, almost derailing the first attempt in two years to find peace, Syrians on the ground are hopeful that peace will return to their homeland. It was March 2011 when the pro-democracy uprising in Syria turned violent. Since then, more than 2,50,000 Syrians have lost their lives in close to five years of armed conflict. More than 4.5 million people have fled the country and a further 6.5 million people are internally displaced. With a new round of peace talks in Geneva, there are renewed hopes that peace and harmony will return to the war-ravaged country. Enough buildings being destroyed, enough bombing my city where I am, and I don't know who is bombing me. I just see bombs coming down, rockets, anything. Enough my brother, my sister being humiliated and becoming a refugee and trying to take a boat and drawing in the Mediterranean when I love my country. Enough when you see your children say, I want to go to school and I cannot go to school because you are not allowing me to do because it's too dangerous. The talks, however, took a blow with the main opposition backing out of the talks seriously weakening the efforts to reach a negotiated solution. The Saudi-backed opposition says the attacks on civilian areas must stop before any negotiation can take place, even as a Russia-backed opposition group readies to take part in the talks. Syrians are keeping a close watch on the peace talks, hoping to see a possible agreement between the Syrian government and the opposition. Inshallah, we are as a Syrian people, in the midst of this crisis, we are trying to get the government and the government to get the solution to the peace. Now, if you agree with everyone, there are a lot of things that will happen in Syria, for example, at the end of the night. This is a very good thing, for example, the United States and Russia are the biggest promoters of these round of talks. Both nations want the fighting to end, even though they are on opposing sides of the politics behind the Syrian conflict. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Time for us to take a short break. Lots more on the other side. Do stay tuned.